Frontier Fighters. Frontier Fighters, the daring and courage of a handful of brave pioneers who made the West safe for the generation of today. In 1890, two years after South Dakota was admitted into the Union, an event loomed on the horizon that threatened to completely stop migration into the state. A Piute Indian by the name of Wavoka had been raised in the home of a white man who was very religious. One night, Wavoka had a wonderful dream. The next morning, he related it to another Piute. I stood in the presence of God, tall chief. And God said to me, go teach the Indians in all the lands the better ways of living. Tell them to be more peaceful, to live without stealing or lying or murdering. Tell them to dance away their sins. Dance away their sins, Wavoka? Yes, so it has been told me in the dream. Is it to be the rain dance or corn dance or buffalo dance? No. God said to Wavoka, go into all the lands and teach the red man the ghost. In Waboka's dream, there was a mixture of old Indian customs and the new religious ideas of Christianity. Everywhere this new teacher went, he was welcomed. Soon the teaching spread, and each tribe changed them just a little, until Waboka could hardly recognize them by the time they reached South Dakota. One of the disgruntled chiefs of the South Dakota Indians was Short Bull. For years, he had been looking for something that would appeal to the Indians so he could lead them in a general uprising against the whites. He recognized the teachings of Wavoka as the way. Returning to the Pine Ridge Agency, he immediately set himself up as a messiah. He would not teach the ways of peace, but war. His message would be death to the whites. Have not the agents on the reservations worked bad medicine against the red man? Has he not placed around our necks a yoke? Has he not robbed the Indian of his birthright and heritage, taken his land, stolen his food? Lied to him and deceived and tricked him. Yes, if you withdraw off the white man's yoke, follow me. I will teach you the ritual of the ghost dance. I will place upon each one of you a magical holy shirt. I will teach you the sacred chant of this new religion. And then, when each of you has become a messiah, all who try to harm you will fall dead in their tracks. When we have learned the ghost dance and wear the holy shirt, we will move off the cursed reservations. And once again, Hunt the buffalo in the badlands, and every pale face who lifts his hand against the red man must die! The message of the ghost dance spread all over the Dakotas. Before many weeks had passed, over 3,000 Indians had secretly left the reservations. The bloodthirsty braves, fired with the Messiah craze, began lying in wait for the immigrant trains. I've got the strangest feeling. If we weren't so close to the Black Hills, I'd say turn back. Well, oh, that's just a woman's foolish fears. If you females ain't a fretting about one thing, it's another. Jed, what's that a coming? Off there at the east? More folks are heading for South Dakota. Mm, what's they doing off the trail? Oh, I don't know. Indians! Oh! Indians! Oh! Get the wagons in the circle! Oh, I told you I had a feeling! Don't go screaming. We're all well-armed, and there's 50 of us. We'll be more than a match for them. 
There's hundreds of red chins are coming. Liggity split. All of them's got rifles. Must be an Indian uprising. Who will be massacring? All of us. Get the women and children under the wagon. Get them in the wagon and let them make a run for it. There's 500 of those red chins are coming for us. Outrage followed outrage. By threats, intimidation, and massacre, the Red Men stopped the flow of immigration into South Dakota. The situation took a sudden turn from serious to critical with the news that... Mr. Governor, Sitting Bull has just joined forces with Short Bull. Bigfoot is being implored to take up the Tommyhawk. In another month, every Indian in the Dakotas will be on the warpath. We must act at once. This Messiah craze has gotten out of hand. There's only one man who has ever put the fear of God into these redskins, General Nelson A. Miles, and I'm going to ask the government at Washington to send him to South Dakota. General Miles. Hold the troops in readiness, Sergeant. Directly after my conference with the governor, we take up the march. Yes, sir. The governor expects you, General Miles. You're very welcome, sir. Thank you. General Miles, Governor. Oh, yes, come in. Your Excellency. General Miles, I, I don't believe I have to apprise you of this critical situation. Unless we can get these Indians back on their reservations, this state has no future. We look to the migration of farmers, miners, and cattlemen to build up our population. But the overland routes must be kept open. I believe I know the temper of the red men. Let me have one decisive battle, and their leaders will be ready for a powwow. Well, I, I leave the entire affair in your hands. But one thing is certain. This messiah outbreak, this maniacal uprising, must be put down. I give you my word, it shall. And, Mr. Governor, South Dakota has a future. <laughs> Scouts assure us that the chiefs, Yellowbird and Bigfoot, are leading their braves and moving against them. Yes, the rate we're both traveling then, we should meet at Wounded Knee Creek. Sitting Bull has not yet taken up the march. Good. Take a detachment of 50 men. Get to Pine Ridge Reservation and arrest him and his leader. Yes, sir. If your information is correct, before sundown tomorrow, there should be a pitched battle at Wounded Knee Creek. Hiding the hair of the Redskins yet, General Miles? Yeah, they'll be here. Do you suppose they believe all this poppycock about the holy shirt protecting them from bullets? Major, my experience has taught me that an Indian believes in good medicine or bad medicine. The Indian's medicine is all powerful for good. The white man's for evil. A bullet is no respecter of shirts, sir. Well, I hope we get the leaders in the first few minutes of fighting. I don't want to exterminate the Indian. I just want to get them back to the reservations and bring peace to South Dakota. Hey. Who's that coming there? Well, one of the scouts, sir. There are about a thousand Indians under yellow bird and Bigfoot approaching Wounded Knee Creek. Yes. Are they armed with rifles? About one third are, sir. The others with bow and arrows and tommyhawks. A few have carbines. Yes. Very good. Give the order to attack. We'll cross Wounded Knee Creek first and take the fight into their ranks. Yes, sir. Ready for attack. Ready for attack. Oh! Hold your fire, men, until we cross the creek. Signal to fire will be when I take my sword out of its scabbard and point it straight at the enemy. We're getting pretty close to them, General. They'll have our range in another two or three hundred yards. Fire! Powers of protection. Poor devils. Sergeant, give the order to stop firing. 
My General, you've got a thousand redskins right in the palm of your hand. I've not come to South Dakota to destroy the red men. Safeguard and preserve them. Save them from themselves. You must never forget, Major, that while these Indians may be troublesome at times, they are wards of the government. Children of the great white father in Washington. A rider to see you, General Miles? Oh, what is it, Corporal? General, I've just come back from Grand River. Sitting Bull is dead. Uh, who killed him? The soldiers you sent to arrest him were fired upon by Sitting Bull's followers. In the fight that followed, Sitting Bull was killed. That's too bad. It makes it all the harder for the government forces when we set down the powwow. The Indians will think I sent the soldiers to kill the great chief. That, that's all I have to report, sir. Yeah, very good. Yes, sir. Well, powwow we must have. Sergeant, sir. Send Indian scouts under a flag of truce to all the redskins in the Badlands. Tell them that General Miles wants to sit down with them and smoke the pipe of peace. In the name of the great white father in Washington, I say go back to the reservation. Go back to your agency home. I give my word, which has never been broken with my Indian brothers, that you will have good food, kind treatment, and forever live in peace and plenty. This is my word. I have spoken. Sitting Bull is with his fathers in the happy hunting grounds. Bigfoot, he is there too. Yellow Bird has joined him. The chiefs are dead. The holy shirt was bad medicine. From rising sun to rising sun... Through all the years to come, we will be at peace with our white brothers. This is my word. It shall never be broken. Thus ended the last armed Indian trouble in the state of South Dakota. The Messiah craze had burned itself out, and prosperity returned to the Badlands thanks to the courage and daring of another great frontier fighter, General Nelson Appleton Miles.